asking them so type your question as many times as possible so that i can be asking them so i will ask your question type your question as many times the more active you are the more question you are asking the more i know that you are here with us the more i recognize you the more you are likely to be picked to ask questions okay so ask questions that have to relate with business growth finance or uh, how can you grow your business at this time how to make money those are the questions so now we are going back okay now we are going to start very soon we are going to start very soon we are going to start very soon is Paul there? Okay, Paul is live. Paul is live. I'm adding Paul to the chat. I'm Paul Alright, Jackal. Paul Alright, Jackal. We're adding to the chat right now. Hi. Hey, hey Paul. How hey. are you doing, Paul? Sorry, my good brother. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing at this time? Man, lovely, bro. You're looking good. Yeah, yeah. Same there. Hope you're keeping safe, boy. Hope you're keeping safe. Absolutely, we're all quarantined. And we all know that you are a great guy. You've been able to achieve uh, something remarkable. One, one good thing about you is uh, you started very small in Dimota. And you yeah. grow to be recognized by four. Not only that, you have this attitude of wanting to improve cultural behavior among Nigerians and Africa at large. I remember when you did the, uh, the Unity, Unity Door that was basically teaching our, our female children how to behave as a female and to also educate them about our cultural behavior. That was quite remarkable. And uh, not only yeah. that, you got a lot of people signing you all over the world. And now Unity Door is almost in every 10 homes in Nigeria. Uh, Paul, honestly, I, I, I'm quite impressed, and that is why uh, you are always my friend. And uh, above that, you are, you are a friend to a lot of people because you have done well for yourself and to Nigeria at large. So, but Thank a lot you. of audience here are really inquisitive to know exactly how you were able to get to that kind of position, or is it a magic or whatever it is. So, we have a lot of questions for you. And... We please. I wanted to answer it very well so that we can all benefit from from this question and everything. Some other people will be asking questions online, but I'm going to throw the one that I have in my phone right one to you. All right. Okay. So welcome again. So my Thank first question, Paul, goes like this: Tell us how you started. How you started? We need to know how you started. Well, thank you, Sam. First of all, thank you for having me with this exceptional with Sam. And um, it's my pleasure and my honor to be in this room. So actually, as you know, I actually um, came all the way from Wari to Lagos to study um, uh, for, for my, 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 my first degree. And then when I came to the United States Embassy, I got rejected three attempts to get a visa to study. We are about nine of us who came in from the same secondary school. Everybody got a visa apart from me. So while I was feeling so dejected, what I did was I had to join my brother-in-law who was in Idumota. And um, I think that was the very big eye-opener for me because all my life I've been in worry. But coming to Idumota, I saw a different kind of life. I saw young boys making so much money. I saw them trading. I saw them hustling. And um, my brother-in-law being very successful was also somebody I looked up to. And I said to myself, if I stay put work hard enough i'll be able to at least be like what guys i'm seeing here so in the course of working with my brother-in-law i started also venturing out to do other things as a hustler and then i would go to the local market buy things and go to supermarkets in in vi and all the rest to supply these items so just like something that we didn't actually plan it blossomed and then from there we got accidentally into toys which i will share later and from selling toys Park and shop and the rest of that growing, growing, opening up new branches. And the more they grew, the more our, our portfolio grew with them as well. So those were just the early days where somebody who wanted to travel overseas ended up in the Dumata and then grew something up. 
Oh, uh, this is amazing. So, uh, uh, quick one from your question that you've answered. Uh, some people have asked, uh, you know, Mr. Larry over here is asking that, uh, asking a lot of questions. I'm going to keep it aside. I'm going to ask you that one later. But I want to ask you, while you're working with your brother, was it that time you developed these skills that you venture to start your own business? Absolutely not. Not at all. Listen, I'm a son of a cover. My dad's been a businessman. And the good thing was that right from a very early age, my father exposed us to those entrepreneurial um, orientations in the sense that he had us working in his, in his craft shop. So we're producing artworks just like his other boys. And even as early as 12 years, my dad opened a, our first bank account where I could actually deposit my money from the sales, from the craft I've produced, but I couldn't withdraw this money. So, and the same thing with my elder brother, so, and even my younger ones. So, my dad made sure that we went into the entrepreneurial sphere at a very young age. And so, it was already done in us that, that you could actually skill yourself. My dad always teach okay. something about Okay, okay. Uh, sorry to call you short. That basically means that the experiential skills came from your dad at a very young age. Absolutely. So, okay, what that took you into toy business? How did you get to, to go into toy business? Well, you see, they always say something. You plan the future, but the future never follows the plan. So hmm. back in days, my, my friends would bring things from London and then bring in things like single sewing machine, hero stepper, things for exercise. And I would take this thing as a young boy and take them to park and shop. So, but you know one thing, each time I was in park and shop, my instinct always draws me to the shelf where they sell toys. Perhaps because as a young boy, I never played with toys. My dad never bought toys for me. So I think I always loved looking at this, uh, admiring the kind of toys. As an adult, I was like thrilled. Oh, look at this toy. It does this, it does that. But because of my, you know, my love for this shelf, I could easily notice when it started drying up. Perhaps the old supplier was no longer bringing in the toys for them. And, you know, for an entrepreneur as myself, I saw this as an opportunity. So the first thing I did, without even knowing where they sell toys in Idumata, without even having any clue of who sells toys. I just went to Deepak, the Indian man, and I said, hey, Deepak, I have a sister who brings in toys. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. So you went to the Indian market, to Sorry, where, I, where, they, where they sell toys. Yeah, go ahead, from the Indian market. 